So what is this? This is my first video on Flutter. Why this video? Well, I figured out how, as I learn it, I'll post some videos. I'm not exactly sure of the structure. And so maybe it might just be sort of ad hoc. Um, as I learn something new or I find something that I think I want to post, I'll, I'll post it. Um, again, it's going to depend on my bandwidth and so on. I'm still doing go on the run post and videos for that. So we'll see. But certainly, if you have ideas of what this should look like, let me know. And remember, keep in mind, I am learning. So this is us learning Flutter together. I, As I learn things, I'll try to demonstrate or illustrate it um, in my own way. And hopefully that resonates with people. I think people have different ways of learning things. And um, some people like my style and some people, frankly, hate it. Anyway, with that said, um, I'm going to start off this first video by doing a simple demo of what a Flutter application look like. I'm not going to get into too much detail. In other videos, I'll try to illustrate what's going on. The scope of this video, I'm not going to go through the setup and installation of your environment because the Flutter.io website is pretty straightforward and easy to get going in terms of the installation. The thing that I have the most issue with that I've yet to sort of understand is when I'm testing on a real iOS device. But as you can see on my screen, I have a, an iOS simulator. This is very easy to get going if you are on a Mac. If you are not on a Mac, you cannot do iOS simulation or you wouldn't be able to um, develop for iOS devices. Either, regardless of what device you're on, whether it's Mac, Linux, or Windows, you're always gonna be able to develop for and test for Android. What is Flutter? So Flutter is this project from Google. It's a framework developed using the Dart programming language. And what it allows you to do is write mobile application. Today it's mobile application for Android and iOS primarily. And you sort of don't have to think about the details of the particular devices. The thing is, it is not a simulator. It doesn't run in some environment like you might Era of things like Cordova or React Native or any of those sort of thing. It actually compiles to the native code. So when you take your Dart code and the Flutter framework and you compile it to iOS, it generates iOS binary, which is different than Android binaries. But if you compile it for Android, it generates Android binaries and uses Java and so on and link against the Java library and so on. For me, I like the idea that, oh, you just code in this environment where you don't have to think about the specifics of the device. Let's jump in. And the way you create a Flutter application is you just type Flutter create command. And this will run and it's gonna say that it's done in like seconds, two seconds. But as you can see, I don't have my prompt back yet. It's gonna still go for another two seconds. And so now it's actually finished. And it did some checks and you can see it says that I have um, a recent version of Flutter. I'm running it on Mac. Um, I have the Android tool chain install. Uh, I have iOS developer toolchain installed too. I've, I'm using VS Code and I have a device at Device Connect, which is this um, virtual device, um, the iOS simulator. And so I tell you exactly how to get started. CD into the demo directory that I created and just type Flutter Run. And we wait a little bit and you should see that my app would get compiled and it's going to launch on this iOS simulator. And it's a very basic app that comes with Flutter that they create every single time you create an application. Um, it's a nice getting started app. It has pretty much all the things you would need in to get started in any application and you can build from there. Uh, interesting. The one day I want to show you a demo, <laughs> I cannot get it to run properly. So it failed. So let's rerun this. I'll just... Usually this works flawlessly. This is quite literally the first time it's failed. And as you can see, after rerunning it, it came back, it came up. So here it is. And this app is a stateful app. It can maintain state. And I can click this button and you can see it increment count. And so the nice thing is once you're running this, you can make changes to the code and type R, for example, which would rerun your application in seconds, compile it, rerun it, the kind of hot reload or you can do a full rebuild um, with Shift R. So let me do this. Let me quit this and start up Visual Studio Code. 
your application essentially as you work in flutter you're really going to be working in this lib directory and this is our entire application i'll restart it and it should run one of the things i'll do is i'll remove everything and then start with if the simplest application so this is dart so let's write a simple dart application and you can see it prints hello world but we're writing a flutter application we're using the flutter framework so i'll import flutter have support for packages so i'll import the material package and this is going to allow me to write application based on Google's material team. And it doesn't matter if this these applications actually run on iOS or Android, they still can support the material. And this application you're looking at here is a material application. So I've imported the material package and it's saying that, you know, I've imported this package, but I haven't, I haven't used anything from it. So the simplest application you can write in Flutter actually is an application where you call the run app function. And this function, as it says, is it inflates a given widget and attach it to the screen. And what it takes, it takes a widget. So your app is a widget. And that's the key thing about Flutter. Everything is a widget. It's really impressive. Even things you might not think of as rigid, like centering something is a widget. It's a central widget. And so that I really like. So there's this idea of a widget to just stick to the extreme. And I sort of like it. So we're going to do run app. And what should be our widget that represents our application? Well, we just did a hello world. Why don't we do something that say hello world also? So let's do put a text box up and we can have a text widget in Dart. Single quotes or double quotes, still the same thing. It doesn't have any special meaning. We should be able to run this. Okay, so let's go back and let's do shift R to rebuild the entire application and rerun it and it broke and so you probably can't see this but essentially what it's saying is if i scroll back up i'm using a widget this text widget but it has no directionality fortunately the text widget has a text direction that you can give it and if we look at the type for text direction is this class called text direction so we can say text direction and notice as we start typing we're all for text direction dot lrt now if you know object oriented programming this essentially means that these are static values or members that are being exposed by this class let's save that and we will again try to rebuild our application with shift r and let's see and there it is. You can see hello world hiding all the way up at the top over there. And I don't think you can write a simpler application that is disreadable for any mobile device. No, sure, there's a lot of magic being hidden away from you in all these libraries and all these other things, but at least in terms of what you have to write to get something on the screen, this is pretty impressive in my opinion. But I'll show you other things that I really like. Remember I said that even centering something on the screen is a widget. So I'll click on this, highlight my text widget, and I'll go to this menu and I'm going to say wrap this in a center widget. Now I could wrap it in a column widget, a container widget, um, or you know, a row and any other widget. Well actually I'm going to say wrap it in a column widget. Now, column widget may have many children. Sort of makes sense that if you have a column, you might want to put number of widgets in that column and lay them out from essentially top down like this. And so I have this one widget there. Uh, let's do another one. Hi there. And let's go back here and I'll let's do shift R. Now, nothing on the screen, right? It looks like it's hidden somewhere. Well, one of the other properties you can set on a column is the major axis alignment. And so for a column, the major axis alignment would be up and down. If we look at what the value um, we can take here is from this main axis alignment class. So we can do that main axis alignment class. And again, we're offered a few values that are static. So we want center. And I'll go back here and type R to refresh. And 
Okay, that did not do it. So let's do Shift R. And I'll get back to what's going on here with this R versus Shift R. And as you can see, I have my two widgets on the screen and it's centered. I think that is super awesome. And that makes it very, very easy to do things. Um, here's another, I'll keep this short. I'll show you one other widget that's fairly easy to use. And it's called a container widget. It tells you, if you scroll down, it says create a widget that comes by com common painting, positioning, and sizing widget. Now we can do things like you can set the height on a container widget. I'll do color. And so I can do the colors, that. And again, I can do, let's do green accent, for example. And I'll save that. And let's go see if we can refresh. Uh, nothing. Let's do shift r and there you go um our background is black let's change that to like let's say white and so i have a column widget why don't we have wrap our column widget in a container and so now i've wrapped that in a container notice all i've done is a container widget the child of my container widget was my previous column widget that's all that happened and now i want my container widget to have a color and I'll save that and go back here and shift R and we should now have a white black background but now notice that you cannot see my text because it was white so we can set color of the text too and you can see we can start play around you, know, you can do text style and set the color of the, the text so for example if we look at some of the properties for text style we have color and we can do colors that black let's say black 54 or something and you know you can set other things too but um, let's put this also on our other text there we go and let me go refresh and so this is one of the things that I really like about flutter it lends itself to this sort of experimentation and playing around to see what's happening and how you can change things very easily. My impression is that um, is really nice and easy to get started. It's engaging because you can have an idea and you know, just very easily we can just start off doing things. Now this is not going to be your entire application, but this would be one screen, but at least you can see how easy it is to do it. Take care. See you in the next video, whatever that is. Let me know if you have any suggestions. All right, bye.